are fully listed in export ban on hydroxychloroquine, a drug favoured by US President Donald Trump as a treatment against coronavirus, as questions remain over the malaria medicine's effectiveness against COVID-19. The Directorate General of Foreign Trade said in a notice that the drug and its formulations were now free to be exported. India accounts for 70% of global production of the drug, which is also used to treat lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. US President Donald Trump warned that complete decoupling between deeply interwined US and Chinese economies remains a potential policy. The US certainly does maintain a policy option under various conditions for the complete decoupling from China. He wrote that he was responding to comments by his trade representative Robert Meitzer, who has been at the forefront of trade war negotiations with Beijing. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif tweeted that an agreeable solution is possible for the United Nations nuclear watchdog's request for access to two nuclear sites in the country, France, Britain and Germany. All parties to Iran's nuclear deal with major powers have submitted a draft resolution to the International Atomic Energy Agency's Board of Governors calling on Iran to stop denying the agency access to two old sites and to cooperate fully with it. The reopening of businesses shot due to the coronavirus pandemic is fueling optimism on Wall Street. The reopening of businesses shot due to the coronavirus pandemic is fueling optimism on Wall Street that the US economy is on the path to recovering from a steep recession. For an up-to-the-minute read on consumer behavior, Wall Street is monitoring the number of people moving through airport security checkpoints, restaurant reservations, and gasoline demand, among other data. This information is particularly valuable now because conventional economic reports on hiring, consumer confidence and spending can lag a month or more. French anti-racism activists draped a black cloth over the statue of a colonel commander in central Paris, prompting three arrests and brief tension with police. The target of the protests was a monument to General Joseph Gallini, who led brutal campaigns to quash rebellion in French colonies, but is more widely known as celebrated as a World War I hero. Three activists who climbed the statue to cover it were handcuffed and detained by police, who threatened to fire tear guns on the other activists and journalists, filming the scene from below. The detained activists were soon released and the crowd dispersed peacefully. Saudi Arabia's sovereign fund will invest 1.5 billion US dollars in the telecommunications and digital services business controlled by Indian billionaire Mukesh Ambani, bringing total new investment in Jaya Platforms Limited to 15.2 billion US dollars since April. The public investment fund will hold a 2.32% stake in the arm of Reliance Industries Limited. The deal, the 11th in Tajayo in about two months, adds to the list of high-profile backers, betting the company will disrupt India's massive consumer market with its technology. Australia's unemployment rate hit its highest level in two decades last month, as hundreds of thousands more people lost their jobs because of pandemic-induced shutdowns. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the jobless rate jumped to 7.1% in May, following the loss of 227,700 posts, which is almost three times more than forecast, and followed a more than 600,000 fall the month before. The United Nations Security Council is considering a proposal to reopen a border crossing from Iraq into Syria for six months to allow the delivery of humanitarian aid to help millions of Syrian civilians combat the coronavirus pandemic. 
The 15-member council in January allowed a six-year-long cross-border aid operation to continue from two places in Turkey until July 10. The dropped crossing points from Iraq and Jordan due to opposition by Syrian ally Russia and China. Germany and Belgium gave the Council a draft resolution on Wednesday that would extend approval for the Turkish border crossings for one year and reopen the Iraq crossing for six months. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that the military alliance would investigate an incident between Turkish warships and a French naval vessel in the Mediterranean as France accused Turkey of repeated violations of the UN arms embargo on Libya. According to a French defense official, the frigate Corvette was lit up three times by Turkish naval targeting radar when it tried to approach Turkish civilian ship suspected of involvement in arms trafficking. The Corvette backed off after being targeted. The French vessel was part of NATO's naval operation in the Mediterranean Sea Guardian at the time of the June 10 incident. The Saudi Ministry of Foreign Affairs denounced on Thursday the Turkish and Iranian aggression on Iraqi soil. In a statement, the ministry considered this act of aggression an unacceptable interference in the affairs of an Arab country, a flagrant violation of its territories, a threat to Arab and regional security, and a clear violation of international principles and covenants. The ministry affirmed that the kingdom stands next to Iraq and supports all measures to preserve its sovereignty, security and stability. Egypt repatriated 23 laborers from western Libya after accusations that forces allied to the government of national accord had detained and abused them. Earlier in the week, a video widely circulated on social media showing the laborers forced to stand on one leg with their bare feet on sand as they raised their hands. The video immediately drew swift condemnation from senior Egyptian officials. Saudi Arabia has proposed a framework to end the latest standoff in southern Yemen between nominal allies under a Saudi-led coalition as violence escalates with the Iran-aligned Houthi movement in the north of the country. Previous clashes between Yemen's Saudi-backed government and the Southern Transitional Council, a separatist group, have complicated UN efforts to end Yemen's conflict and protect its fractured health sector from COVID-19. It calls for a ceasefire in Abyan province and for SDC to rescind emergency rule. Thereafter, Saudi-backed President Abdurrahman Mansur Hadi would appoint a governor and security head for Aden and name a premier to form a cabinet that includes the SDC. The World Bank said a decade of conflict in Syria has strangled economic growth among its neighbors and driven poverty higher in Iraq, Jordan and Lebanon. The war has led to higher debt burdens, deteriorating labor markets, especially for youth and women, and more restricted access to public services such as healthcare and electricity. It estimates the conflict has been responsible for annual reductions in economic growth of 1.2 percentage points in Iraq, 1.6 percentage points in Jordan, and 1.7 percentage points in Lebanon in the last decade. Saudi Arabia affirmed its support for the efforts of the International Atomic Energy Agency, or the IAEA, to intensify inspections of Iranian sites and nuclear activities. Prince Khalid bin Sultan, Saudi Arabia's ambassador to Austria, who is also the country's governor to the IAEA, praised the report by the agency's director general Rafael Grassi, which called on Iran to fully and immediately cooperate with the UN nuclear watchdog. Prince Khalid's remarks came during a virtual session for the IAEA Board of Governors meeting, which mainly focused on Iran's nuclear program.